My father fancied himself a DJ in college and collected a lot of vinyl and I grew up with vinyl just all over the house lining the walls and just looking at album art as I'm listening to music, reading the credits was a big part of my childhood and so I think that's what led me in the path of music. There's a documentary that Nelson George made called Brooklyn Boheme and he talks about the neighborhood that I was living in and working in at the time which is you know, Clinton Hill, Fort Greene, Park Slope, Prospect Heights, Atlantic Avenue where they got the Barclays Center now. That neighborhood, they called it Bogolan. It was like uniquely African-American, uniquely artistic, just a community of, of spoken word poets, painters, rappers, who were all young people, but they were professionals in that community. You know, you had um, Branford Marcellus living in that community. You had uh, Rosie Perez and Spike Lee, and these are people who made their mark on the national stage. In New York, I had the luxury of having labels I could visit and bring my demo tape to, but all the rappers I knew in, in, in New York were broke. And in Cincinnati, I had friends in Cincinnati, so I would go out there, and they were in Cincinnati hustling. They were fiercely independent because they didn't have the luxury of having the record labels in their backyard. So the people who were making hip hop music, they were hustlers and they were buying their own equipment. They had their own studios and they were producing music that sounded professionally could compete with the stuff that was coming out of big New York studios. I made my name as a lyricist in New York, but people didn't take my music seriously. And so I started connecting with cats from Ohio. Their musical sensibilities were slightly different from a New Yorker because they were influenced by New York, especially hip hop, New York hip hop, but they were also influenced by down south and bounce music and what ended up being trap music and also influenced by the West Coast sound and influenced by Master P and then also influenced by the funk and soul that came out of the Midwest. You know, the hip hop producers that come out of the Midwest, it's like the middle of it all, they got it all. Hey. Faster than the speed of sound, smashing through these barriers and blasting out your speakers now. Travel around the planet till I land where I'm needed now. We entertain us, they want to call us leaders now. Whoa, extra bag is not in the plan. To shop when I land, stop at the fans. Where every airport from Okinawa to Osaka, Japan. Yeah. Brooklyn is changing, and so am I. I see you on the other side, travel like. I met Mos Def when I was a teenager, and he was like the cool kid on the block. He had acting jobs, and he wore suits, and he always had money in his pocket, and he would spread his love and money around. He was a couple years older than me, so he was always somebody I looked up to. But then we became friends because we had children around the same time, and we went on that mutual journey of having a child for the first time together. And around that time, he was making his name in the music business, and I was kind of coming up behind him. And he would take me out on the road and take me to, to gigs and stuff like that. And the, our friendship and the Black Star album revolved around that. And the Cats of Rookus saw this happening. So it was like a perfect storm. They, they, they offered us a deal right at the time when we were just building our friendship. My life directly influences my art. And so my children put the battery in my back and inspired me in ways that I may not have ever been inspired. It made me work harder. It made me want to make art better. And it made my art better. As an artist, you, you, you don't want to make a song that you can't play for your mom. When you have kids, you don't want to make art that you can't show to your kids. And so that's not dishonest. I didn't stop cursing and stop dealing with heavy adult themes and dealing with debauchery and you know sex and violence. I don't want to eliminate those, those things from my art, but it challenges you to have to be honest with the fact that you're now responsible for another human being and you're responsible for their outlook on the world. People will tell you horror stories, oh, your life is gonna be over, oh, they're not. Me personally, I didn't find any of that to be true. I found my life to get infinitely better when I had children. It was more of a challenge, of course, but whatever's worth having is, is always a challenge. I've always liked playing music and being in control of the music in a room. Um, I would DJ little parties for my friends and I found that I was good at being a selector and I was good at knowing which song went with what. And so I was intrigued by the idea of, of doing it professionally. And I just went out there and started. You know, I take my craft as an MC seriously. And sometimes people jump into wanting to be a rapper and they don't really put the time in. So with respect to me DJing, I, I'm fully aware that when I work as a DJ, when I get booked 
and get paid, it's not because of necessarily, first and foremost, my skills as a DJ. It's because of my celebrity name factor. There are DJs who are not celebrities, who work nameless, faceless, who work and provide the vibe for parties all week long. And so I try to make sure that when I enter in that realm, I, I, I pay respect to the, to the DJs. Now, I'm, I'm confident in my ability to move a crowd. I'm confident in my musical knowledge. But when it comes to the technical skill of knowing how to work the equipment and know how to DJ, there's DJs who dedicate their entire lives to it. What's exciting to me about DJing is being able to express myself through someone else's music. I already express myself fine through my music. DJing excites me because I can pick something that someone else said that fits the mood perfectly. That it's, a, it's really like a rush. It's really like a drug when you pick the right song for a crowd and you see that reaction. Yes, Talib Kweli, keep going, keep doing your thing, keep banging, keep thumping.